industrial Midwest is back. The industrial Midwest is back. President Biden declares the return of our region's manufacturing industry as Intel breaks ground on its massive semiconductor plant in central Ohio. Intel says the plant will provide 3,000 jobs, paying an average of $135,000 a year. It will also address the global semiconductor shortage, which has slowed the economy. But not everyone in central Ohio is excited about this project. News 5 State House reporter Morgan Trow begins our team coverage from Licking County tonight. These trucks are more than just a construction site. They represent Ohio joining the global conversation of tech development. We would like to welcome everyone to the Silicon Heartland. That's what we started here today. It's groundbreaking. One, two, three. Yeah. Let's do it. Both the day's ceremony and the new multi-billion dollar Intel Semiconductor Manufacturing Facility, the first of its magnitude in the country. Made in Ohio and made in America is no longer just a slogan. It's happening. The facility is set to revitalize the United States supply chain, reduce our reliance on foreign countries, and will bring tens of thousands of jobs to the state. We look forward to the opportunity of working with uh, not just Intel, but uh, Juan Columbus, Jobs Ohio, and everybody involved. Regional Council of Carpenters Jason Clark says this long-term project will help union members like him. That job security is paramount to the contractor base we supply labor to. To continue to make Ohio attractive, it's, it's high, highly important. But not everyone is Have totally to on board. Things are moving very, very fast and people that should have a little bit more of a say or be involved so that we're ready. Gabe Walters is a technology teacher at Licking Heights High School, the exact area that is being impacted by the plant. He knows Intel says they will be supporting schools to learn, but he says that even after reaching out, he knows nothing. So that makes me feel a little bit nervous when students should be spun up by 2025 and they're not really preparing the people who are actually supposed to be getting kids ready. Lieutenant Governor John Houston reassures that he and the Intel team will make sure the community has all the information they need to take part in the growth. So we're going to try to work to minimize that disruption as best we can by building the infrastructure around here that will serve the people who live in this community. It means a bright future for everybody across the state. I'm Morgan Trow reporting. Morgan, thank you. Let's go in depth with a look at the impact of the semiconductor shortage on the U.S. economy. A report from Deloitte finds the shortage of the past two years costs our economy $500 billion in revenue. And few industries have been hit harder than the automotive industry, which missed out on $210 billion in sales last year. So obviously it's no wonder then that Intel is going all in, building up its presence in our state. As part of the groundbreaking celebration, the company announced nearly $18 million in funding for eight different collaborations of Ohio colleges and universities. It's all geared toward making sure Ohio is training the workers of tomorrow. Dozens of higher education institutions grouped into eight collaborations, all with their own focus on providing the workers Intel will need. We're leading an effort that is really focusing on a variety of on-ramps and off-ramps. Kent State is leading one of the projects, offering everything from certifications and two-year degrees to master's and Ph.D. programs surrounding this new era of high-tech manufacturing. It's a very wide range of opportunities that will be afforded. It's been a game-changing development for students like Lila Colbrun. She's a mechatronics engineering major. It's kind of a cross between like, uh, like software, mechanical, and electrical engineering. With a minor in unmanned aircraft systems. I want to do um, something with drones. Lorraine County Community College is leading another eight projects. We've been doing this for uh, over 10 years. It's been focused on fueling the manufacturing workforce since 2010 when it teamed up with Smart Microsystems. That company now operates out of the LCCC campus and says its entire technical team is staffed by students from the school's microelectric manufacturing program. They've been preparing for this moment. What does the new uh, era of manufacturing look like? Things are going to get smaller, they're going to need to get smarter, and somebody's going to need to be figuring out how to do all this stuff. And the timing couldn't be more perfect. Two years ago, most people didn't even know what a semiconductor chip was. Then, the pandemic led to a shortage of them. The chip shortage, right, created 
created the um, awareness that this stuff is in the products that we use every day and we don't even know it. Now people are starting to look at manufacturing differently. Students are getting hands-on experience building machines and circuit boards, knowing their work helps build the things we all rely on from cell phones to dishwashers. It creates sort of a coolness associated with manufacturing which always seems like a dirty word. The grant money announced today is expected to help all these schools train 9,000 students over the next three years to meet the demand Intel brings to town. It will bring not only people to work at those plants, but all of the other suppliers and other companies that engage with Intel will also be coming. So they will also need workforce. And in the classroom, these students know the future is theirs. It's just like giving massive opportunities. Economic analysts expect the global semiconductor industry will grow this year to more than $600 billion for the first time ever. But they expect shortages and supply chain issues well into con well will continue well into 2023. And while there is a great demand for semiconductors right now, some industry experts believe sales will begin to slow down in 2024.